So, good morning everyone, um, welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis uh, part 1. So, today uh, we will continue our discussion on total synthesis of uh, terpenoids and we will focus on two total synthesis of one complex natural product called gibberellic acid. So, this gibberellic acid as you can see here it is quite complex it has about 5 rings and several chiral centers and this is a plant hormone um, belonging to called gibberellins and it was produced by plants and from synthetic point of view when you look at this molecule it poses several challenges. It has 8 stereo centers you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that means all the 5 carbons of the middle 5 membered ring are chiral centers ok. Then you have 1 here 6, 7, 8 ok. So, there are 8 chiral centers in this molecule and more importantly it is not only the chiral centers 8 chiral centers which can create trouble as such this molecule is very sensitive towards acids and bases ok. So, that is another reason why synthesis of this molecule created lot of challenges to synthetic chemists. Nevertheless, the first total synthesis of gibberellic acid was reported by none other than uh, Nobel laureate E. A. J. Corey and his synthesis involved diel salt reaction, intramolecular diel salt reaction, iodo lactonization, epoxy lactonization and radical cyclation. So, these are the key reactions which Corey has successfully used in the synthesis of gibberellic acid. So, let us see the is retrosynthesis. This idea was this particular lactone ok. This particular lactone can be made from this intermediate using iodolactonization as the key reaction ok. Using iodolactonization as the key reaction you have a carboxylic acid here ok and you have a double bond. So, one can easily plan iodolactonization. I will come to that uh, what is iodolactonization in a couple of minutes. Then he thought these two hydroxyl groups ok can be introduced with the help of the double bond. If you have a double bond here then one should be able to introduce two hydroxyl groups which are anti to each other ok. And also you can hydrolyze this lactone and oxidize you will get this dicarboxylic acid ok. So, he thought this could be made from this particular intermediate ok. Now, if you look at this intermediate his idea was to use an intramolecular diel salt reaction ok. So, you can see a diene here and a diene of 5 the intramolecular diel salt reaction 4 plus 2 and you also can see the chloride here is not it that can undergo elimination ok to generate one more double bond this double bond ok one more double bond this double bond can be generated after the diel salt reaction followed by elimination ok. Now, this can be obtained from the corresponding alcohol ok. So, this is the key intermediate this is the key intermediate in the synthesis of gibberellic acid proposed by E. J. Corey. How this key intermediate can be made? When you have a double bond here one can think of using a Wittig reaction is not it. So, by methyl Wittig it should be possible to homologate this aldehyde to the vinyl group. Now, you have an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde ok. Wherever you see an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde one reaction which should come to our mind is aldol reaction ok. So, that means if you have dialdehyde basically if you have a dialdehyde like this then 
this can undergo an aldol followed by dehydration you should get this alpha beta and saturated aldehyde. But how do you get this 1,5 dialdehyde? You can do a cleavage of the double bond. You can do a dihydroxylation followed by cleavage with sodium pyruvate. one can get the corresponding 1,4 dialdehyde. Next when you look at this molecule carefully you have this bicyclic 3, 2, 1 system bicyclic 3, 2, 1 system and this he wanted to cyclize ok. This is through the keto aldehyde ok. One can cyclize to get the corresponding alpha hydroxy ketone ok. Then closer look at this molecule one can see cyclohexene, one can see cyclohexene. When you see cyclohexene in any compound obviously 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction should come to your mind, isn't it? So, he thought he can use an intermolecular 4 plus 2 cycloaddition to get that intermediate. Okay, this is a known compound and this he thought he can prepare from this O allyl that is 2 ortho O allyl anisole which can be prepared from coacal which is commercially available. Okay. So, this is the first retrosynthesis and he also proposed another route for the key synthesis of the key intermediate A and that he thought he can make it from intermediate B by two alkylation. Okay. One alkylation will lead to the CH2OH, the other alkylation will give an aldehyde which can be homologate. So, this ketone can be obtained by a radical like reaction here and hydroboration and oxidation regio selective hydroboration and oxidation should generate the ketone. And this double bond you can see here this could be obtained by a 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement ok. I will come to that when I talk about uh, the real synthesis and this intermediate can be obtained by an intermolecular diels all reaction ok by an intermolecular diels all reaction. You can see if you cleave this, this is the diene of file and this is the diene ok. That diene can be obtained from cyclopentadiene. So, these are the two pathways Kore had proposed to synthesize gibberellic acid and let us see how he executed the total synthesis of gibberellic acid. Before that as I said this synthesis as well as the next synthesis of gibberellic acid by Yamado both involve iodolactonization as the key step. So, what is iodolactonization? So, if you have a carboxylic acid, if you have a carboxylic acid and a double bond in the same molecule at appropriate place, okay, then when you treat with iodine, when you treat with iodine the double bond first it will form the corresponding iodonium ion. Okay. Now, if you can deprotonate this hydrogen of carboxylic acid using mild bases like sodium bicarbonate, okay, then the COO minus which forms immediately can open this to give iodo lactone. Usually the 5 membered lactone is preferred okay. and this goes through what we call it as 5 exotet cyclization ok. This is another example you can see there are two double bonds one here and one here and if it cyclizes here it will form a 5 membered ring and if it cyclizes this side it will form 4 membered ring ok. So, obviously Five membered is more favored, so you get five membered iodo lactone. Likewise, one can also do if you have epoxy. See, for example, the same thing if you use MCPBBA and base like sodium bicarbonate. What will MCPBA do? MCPBA will epoxidize the double bond. Then sodium bicarbonate will generate carboxylate that can open up 
ok. You can get intermediate like this ok. That will open up and you will get a 5 membered lactone with CH2 OH ok. So, iota lactonization you can do, epoxy lactonization you can do. In fact, one can also use phenyl selenyl chloride. If you use phenyl selenyl chloride, you can call this as phenyl selenyl lactonization. All are possible, ok. What you need is a double bond and carboxylic acid which are separated by 2 carbons, ok. So, that you can get a 5 membered ring. Now, let us see how he synthesized the tricyclic intermediate. So, he started with uh, goecol. So, that is uh, this compound ok OME and OH and one can use uh, sodium hydroxide and allyl bromide. You allylate the free phenolic hydroxyl then you heat it. So, you heat it at 230 degree Celsius uh, it undergoes Claisen rearrangement ok as you know allyl phenyl ethers undergo Claisen rearrangement to give the corresponding allyl migrated product ok. If you protect this hydroxyl as mem ether ok. Now you can do a dihydroxylation ok and followed by pyruvated cleavage. You get diol and cleave it you get the dialdehyde that you that you reduce it you get the corresponding CH2 CH2 OH. If you look at the dienophile required for the Diels-Alder reaction you need a 2 carbon unit here is not it. So, that is done. Now, you can protect that hydroxyl as benzyl. So, you re deprotonate that hydroxyl group with sodium hydride and quench with benzyl bromide you get the corresponding benzyl ether. Then comes the removal of mem group. So, that you can do with uh, trifluoroacetic acid and followed by oxidation of this phenol to the benzoquinone ok. So, that can be done with this catalyst. So, oxygen as the oxidizing agent and with this cobalt catalyst one can oxidize this phenol to corresponding benzoquinone ok. Once you have this then you do the Diels-Alder reaction. So, this is a known compound that is a diene and this substituted benzoquinone is a dienophile and then do the Diels-Alder reaction you get the corresponding bicyclic compound ok. So, now how many chiral centers are fixed? Of course, it is racemic. So, 1, 2, 3, 3 stereo centers are fixed. Then protect the free hydroxyl group as THP ether. So, dihydropyrin and treat with paratolivine sulfonic acid you protect the primary hydroxyl as THP ether. Now, before we move further I will just briefly explain how the Diels-Alder reaction gave these 3 stereo centers ok stereo selectively ok. So, this is the transformation and as you know Diels-Alder reaction gives mainly the kinetic endo product as the major product. So, you can draw like this transition state. You can see in this case you keep the diene like this and the dienophile comes from the bottom. Dienophile comes from the bottom and this double bond is below the diene. If it is away then it is exo. This is below so, that is why you get the endo product because of the secondary orbital interaction. Now, after the Diels-Alder reaction can you draw this structure? Just to connect these two bonds ok. And here also between these two double bonds ok that is double bond A and double bond B only double bond A acts as dienophile and double bond B does not because the double bond A is 
more electron deficient than double bond B. Okay, the double bond A is more electron deficient than double bond B because of the presence of electron donating methoxy group. Okay, so this can be rewritten like this. Okay, I'll keep it for 30 seconds so that you know you should be able to draw the conformation properly so that you will arrive at this particular structure. Okay. So, it is like this now if you do it then you will know this will be beta and this hydrogen also will be beta. So, both are cis to each other and here this hydrogen you can see that also will be beta that means this CH2OH will be alpha. Okay. Done. Now, you have made the bicyclic compound. So, what is next? You have to reduce these two and before that you have to protect the primary hydroxyl. So, as I said the primary hydroxyl group was protected as THP ether by treating with dihydropyran and PPTS. Then you can reduce this ketone selectively over the other ketone. Because of the presence of lone pair of methoxy group this carbonyl is more electrophilic okay, so that it can attract hydride faster than the other carbonyl. So, one can easily reduce and also the structure is like this is not it. So, the hydride will come from the top that will lead to alpha alcohol. Okay. Then protect the alcohol as methoxy methyl chloride that is CH3O CH2 Cl. Then reduce the enone at low temperature that is alpha beta and such ketone. So, reduce that at low temperature to get the corresponding allylic alcohol. Now, the allylic alcohol if you mesyl it, okay, so allylic alcohol if you mesyl it, you get the corresponding mesylated product. Then sodium bicarbonate, you know it is a, it is a good living group. So, you can use this lone pair on the methoxy group to eliminate that and in the process what you get is corresponding eno. Okay. So, this could have been easily done on the alcohol with acid, but as you know this THP and MOM both protecting groups are sensitive to acid that is why he has to convert that allylic alcohol to mesylate and then use sodium bicarbonate that is base mediated hydrolysis to get the corresponding cyclohexene. Then you have isolated double bond, then conjugated double bond, conjugated double bond is selectively reduced under rhodium catalyzed condition. Now if you use lithium and ammonia, okay. so lithium ammonia is known to remove benzyl group. Okay. So the benzyl group is removed, but at the same time you have a ketone also, is not it? When you have ketone lithium ammonia also will donate electron to the carbonyl group. So, as a result the carbonyl group will become ketyl radical. Okay. Then that will eliminate this OMOM group and you will form enolate. You will form an enolate that will become ketone then that ketone also will be further reduced. So, what lithium ammonia does here is three things. One it removes the benzyl group you get the corresponding OH. Then it, it adds one electron to the ketone first. So, that removes the MOM group and in the process it forms enolate and enolate becomes ketone and then ketone is further reduced to corresponding hydroxyl group. Then oxidation of the diol with chromium trioxide pyridine you get the corresponding keto aldehyde. Okay. Now, you carry out this McMurray coupling. So, the McMurray coupling on this keto aldehyde gives the third 5 member ring, third ring which is 5 member ring. Okay. Now, this is tertiary alcohol, this is secondary alcohol. Okay. So, secondary alcohol is oxidized under modified Swan condition to get the alpha hydroxy ketone and again this bridgehead hydroxyl was protected as mem ether. Okay. 
So now this whole side is taken care. So what we need is modification on the left hand side. Okay. So you have a double bond, if you treat with aspirin tetroxide in the presence of uh, stoichiometric amount of NMO, you get a diol and that diol if you cleave with lead tetracetate you get that diol degree. Okay. So as we have noticed in the tetrasynthesis, so this is one of the key precursor for making the key intermediate A. So once you have this then one can carry out an intramolecular aldol reaction with bases like dibenzyl ammonium trifluoroacetate. So that gives the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. So once you have that alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde simple Wittig reaction will give the corresponding double bond. So now you have the diene which is ready for undergoing intramolecular diel cell reaction. Okay. So what we need is you need to remove this protecting group and attach the dienophile for the intramolecular diel cell reaction. Okay. Uh, once you have the THP ether treat with acetic acid you remove the THP and you get the key intermediate A. The same intermediate he has prepared by two more methods. The second method he started with uh, 4 benzyl oxycyclohexanone, 4 benzyl oxycyclohexanone, then Watsworth Immons modification. So, he did this uh, Wittig modified reaction, he got the alpha beta and saturated ketone, and then vinyl 1 4 addition to this enone you get uh, gamma delta unsaturated ketone. The same thing one can also think about using a Claisen rearrangement to get gamma delta unsaturated ketone or aldehydes. We will come to that when we talk about uh, Claisen rearrangement. Then the double bond is cleaved, the double bond is cleaved with osmium tetroxide and sodium pyruvidate. So this upon aldol reaction, this upon aldol reaction you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it will form a 5 member ring. Okay. So now you have a spiro system, okay, 6 membered, 5 membered, both are fused through spiro fusion. Then one can think about adding a 2 carbon unit. So that is what he did, a vinyl magnesium bromide along with cuprosidide, it underwent a 1 4 addition. And then with uh, triethyl orthoformate and ethylene glycol, he protected the ketone as the ketal. Then he did a selective hydroboration okay, on the double bond to get the primary alcohol. That alcohol was mesylated to get the primary mesylate. So now what he needs is you have to remove the benzyl group, oxidize the alcohol to ketone then connect this. Okay. So the benzyl group was hydrogenolysis to get the alcohol, okay. then PCC oxidation gave the ketone, then treat with potassium tertiary butoxide to give the corresponding tricyclic compound. If you look at this tricyclic compound you will see there is one carbon extra. Okay. What you need is what you need is this, isn't it? So this particular ring, instead of two carbons, you have three carbons. Am I correct? Instead of two carbons, we have three carbons. So the 2 carbons, how you can get it from 3 carbons? So you do treat with methyl lithium, then dehydrate to get the corresponding alkene. Okay. Then what you will do? You can do a ozone analysis to get the corresponding keto. Okay. Now if you treat with base, there are 2 places it can generate anion, one here another one here. 
If this adds here, you will get the 5 ohm battery. Whereas if B adds, it will give 7 ohm battery. Okay. But with sodium hydroxide and ethanol, one could get predominantly the 5 ohm battery. And once you have this aldol, okay, then you can carry out a Bayer Williger oxidation. Okay, so the Bayer Williger oxidation, you can see the acetyl group COCA3 will become OAC. Okay. Then hydrolysis of OAC will give the bridged hydroxyl and oxidation under one condition you get the ketone and remove the ketol. Okay. Before that of course you have to protect the bridged hydroxyl as mem ether, then do the Wittig on the ketone and remove the ketol you get tricyclic intermediate D which has already been converted into intermediate A. Okay. So how did you do that? Now if you treat with sodium hydride and quench with ethyl formate, you can introduce an aldehyde on this side. Okay. Now this on treatment with potassium tetrabutoxide and methyl iodide. So this is 1,3 carbonyl, isn't it? This is 1,3 carbonyl. So it will exist in the corresponding enol form. So that enol become, become the enol methyl ether when you treat with potassium tetrabutoxide and methyl iodide. Okay. Then you introduce another aldehyde on the other side of the carbonyl. Okay. Again you follow the same route, sodium hydride, ethyl formate, you introduce aldehyde on the other side. Now you have to reduce this ketone and as well as this aldehyde. So this is done with redol. So what is redol? Redol is sodium, sodium bis, okay, there are two, sodium bis methoxy ethoxy aluminum hydride, methoxy ethoxy aluminum hydride. So that reduces both ketone and aldehyde to get the diol. Now if you treat with acid, so what will happen? This will become, protonation will take place at this OH, it will become H2O plus, then this lone pair will push this double bond here and in the end what you get is alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde which upon Wittig you will get the corresponding triene. Okay? Then the third route which is supposed to be the shortest route and here you use Diels-Sol reaction and 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement as the key reaction. For the Diels-Sol reaction the diene was prepared in a single step. So butyl lithium treatment gives cyclopenta dienyl anion and quench with 2 bromo allyl bromide followed by DBU treatment gives a mixture of these two isomers, gives a mixture of these two isomers. This upon treatment with this dienophile, okay, between these two electron withdrawing group, one is acetyl and other one is ester which is more electron withdrawing acetyl or ester, acetyl group. So that means the acetyl group will go to endo position. Okay. So this upon Diels-Sol reaction with this particular diene gives the Diels-Sol product 53 percent, then there is another product very interesting product in 20 percent. So what is this product? How it was formed? This again was formed by Diels-Sol reaction, only difference is here this is formed by normal Diels-Sol reaction and this is formed by hetero Diels-Sol reaction. So what is hetero Diels-Sol reaction? Now the dienophile Okay, the dienophile acted like a diene. Okay, the dienophile acted like a diene. Since 
one of the alkene is a carbonyl group you can call this as heterodyne okay heterodyne and your original diene now acted as dienophile okay so that intermolecular heterodyne salt reaction gave b in 20% yield so the major product which is obtained by normal 4 plus 2 cyclo addition this upon treatment with tmso triflate and base formed enol tms ether this molecule when you look at it you can see i have given already the number 1 2 3 1 2 3 so that means this can undergo a 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement okay this will undergo a 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement to give this intermediate i will leave this for a few seconds so that you can visualize okay the same intermediate can be redrawn like this the same intermediate can be redrawn like this okay this is the 5 ohm ring and you can see the 5 ohm ring and this is the 6 ohm ring and you see the 6 ohm ring okay and you have the two bromoallyl group so that we have and you have ch2 next ch2 then enol tms enol tms then ester ester okay so this undergoes a 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement to give this material okay now if you do sodium chloride dmso what happens this is nothing but a protected form of beta keto ester protected form of beta keto ester okay so the beta keto ester can undergo elimination under sodium chloride and dimethyl sulfoxide refluxing condition okay so that gave corresponding ketone then one can use 9 bbn so that regio selective hydroboration can take place to get alcohol and that can be oxidized with pdc to get a diketone then you carry out a dibutyl copper reaction so it exchanges with this and undergoes intramolecular nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl to form the 5 ohm ring now if you protect the hydroxyl group as mem ether so that gives the intermediate p okay so what i will do i will stop here now then tomorrow i will continue our discussion on the total synthesis of gibberellic acid reported by core starting from the intermediate a how he accomplished the total synthesis of gibberellic acid and i also will discuss one more total synthesis of gibberellic acid reported by amara okay so thank you